Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Dr. Kara Wada. I'm an allergist immunologist, and I am also an autoimmune patient navigating the unpredictable world of living with a misbehaving immune system. Today, we are going to dive into a condition called MCAS, mast cell activation syndrome. It is a bit of a medical mystery. As allergist immunologists and physicians, we are still trying to understand it. It is often mistaken for other illnesses, and it can be incredibly frustrating to get a diagnosis. I have seen patients struggle for years with unexplained symptoms. They've seen multiple doctors, sometimes multiple allergists, had countless tests, and still feel like no one was listening. That's why I am passionate about shedding light on MCAS to help you understand what's really going on and to find the support you deserve. Simply put, MCAS occurs when your mast cells, M-A-S-T, these important players in your immune system, become a bit overzealous. They release too many inflammatory substances, causing a cascade of symptoms throughout our body. It's like a security alarm that is constantly going off, even when there is no real danger. See, mast cells are our body's protectors, sometimes troublemakers. Mast cells are our body's first responders. They are white blood cells or infection-fighting cells that are there to help alert our body and be ready to defend itself against invaders like bacteria, parasites, to respond to a sting or to a bite. And they are essential players in the allergic response. In a healthy body, mast cells are a valuable part of the team. They release inflammatory chemicals called cytokines, like histamine, when needed. But in MCAS, these mast cells are a bit like an overzealous security guard, constantly sounding the alarm and releasing those inflammatory substances even when there's no actual threat. It's not that the mast cells are bad, they're just a bit over the top and their set point is set a little too sensitive. Here's where things get complicated. MCAS can affect multiple parts of our body. Some of the common symptoms include our skin, which can result in hives, itching, and flushing, our gut, so abdominal pain, bloating, diarrhea, and sometimes constipation, our heart and circulation with rapid heart rate, dizziness, or fainting, our lungs, wheezing, shortness of breath, our neurologic system, headaches, brain fog, anxiety, difficulty sleeping, as you can see, MCAS is a multi-system disease. It can affect your entire body. And here's a crucial thing to remember. Every MCAS patient is unique. Your symptoms might look a little different from someone else's. So how can we unmask MCAS and get a diagnosis? Getting a diagnosis can be tricky. It's like trying to solve a medical puzzle. So here's how we approach it. First and foremost, I want to know your symptoms. What is your lived experience? What is your body telling you day in and day out? How are those symptoms showing up? What is bringing them on? How are they going away? Getting that history or that story of what your life has been like is critically important. We also want to check some labs. So one in particular I'll check is called a tryptase level. This is a blood level of an enzyme that is released by mast cells in your blood. I typically will check a baseline level and then check it again during a flare to see if it increases significantly. Also generally we'll check urinary levels of metabolites that mast cells release as well. These include things like metabolites of histamine, prostaglandins, and leukotrienes. It's also critically important for me to think about all of the other possible diagnoses that may be causing these symptoms that you are concerned might be MCAS, right? I have to think of the whole, what we call differential diagnosis. So all of the things that could look or seem similar to MCAS. And then I'm also going to want to see, how do you respond to treatment? If your symptoms improve with medications that target mast cell mediators, things like antihistamines, this can be really helpful information when we're putting all of these pieces together. The lived experience, the lab work, the response to treatment, each of these 
plays an important role in understanding what is going on at the root of your symptoms. Occasionally, if a tryptase level is high, or if there are specific symptoms that are really impacting a part of our body, we might need to think about a biopsy. A biopsy is a small sample of tissue, skin, intestinal tissue, bone marrow, that then is looked at under the microscope with specific stains that are geared towards looking at the mast cells, looking at you know, how many of them are there. How do they look? Do they look like they're acting normal? Or are there signs or symptoms that they're acting a little extra abnormal, which might indicate something like mastocytosis, another mast cell disorder. Since MCAS often mimics other conditions and can often go along with multiple different conditions, ruling out or understanding the whole picture of all those possibilities is a huge part of this detective work. Finding a doctor who understands MCAS, who is willing to be curious and really dig through this history and do that detective work is really important. Having a team approach is critical with multi-system chronic conditions. So let's tame the storm. How can we manage our MCAS symptoms? Managing MCAS is a very personalized journey. It's about finding what works best for you and realizing that yes, there are some broad brush strokes. We're gonna talk about some key strategies that can be really important, but knowing that your individual experience is really important and should be honored as well. So first and foremost, trigger avoidance. If you know what sets off your mast cells, certain foods, medications, stressors, minimizing your exposure to those is gonna be your first line defense. Now, the reality is though, we still need to live our lives, right? And so this can create some challenges and can be really helpful to have someone to partner with, decide when it's worth pushing things and when it's better to pull back. Medications. There are a variety of medications we might use depending on symptoms. And these could include things like antihistamines. I typically love to use longer acting less sedating antihistamines like famotidine, vexofenidine, cetirizine. These tend to be your frontline calmers and they come in both H1 and H2 blockers. Leukotriene inhibitors like Montelukast can block another an inflammatory pathway and mast cell stabilizers like chromalin can help keep mast cells in check as well. Other options include surprisingly aspirin, sometimes a short-term use of steroids or corticosteroids, omeluzumab, which blocks an IgE receptor on mast cells, and occasionally I also will use off-label low doses of naltrexone. There are many complementary therapies that I've tried and my patients have tried and reported back to me that some people will find helpful. These include a natural Antioxidants that have antihistamine properties like quercetin and luteolin, vitamin D, proving our body's own detoxification strategies by making sure we're eating a wide range of antioxidants and foods that help support our liver, and trying various gut healing protocols, for, especially for those who are dealing with an element of histamine intolerance as well. Getting to the bottom of why your mast cells are misbehaving can be really helpful. You know, this term root cause approach is across everything, but I also like to think about not only what are the root causes, but what are the driving factors and how can we really direct therapy towards those that are unique to each and every mast cell patient. Remember, there is no single right way to treat mast cell activation syndrome. It's really important to work together as a team to create a plan that addresses your specific needs. Living with MCAS can be incredibly challenging, but you are not alone. Be sure to connect with my online community, the Becoming Immune Confident Facebook group, for support and information. I'll put the link in the description below. MCAS can feel like a medical mystery, and it certainly can add extra challenges to your everyday life. But understanding this condition, finding that doctor who gets it, and creating a personalized approach you can tame those overactive mast cells, find relief, and live a full, vibrant, confident life. What questions do you have about MCAS? 
share your experiences in the comment, and don't forget to hit that subscribe for more videos like this, and we'll see you next time.